This Click View Enablement module will provide you with that next level of troubleshooting when it comes to knowing what requirements are needed for the Windows user accounts that are running the Click View services. This document will also cover what ports are used by each Click View service and how to troubleshoot them. First, we need to provide some background information. During the ClickView server installation process, the installer will ask for the account that will be running the services. In order for the ClickView services to have all of the required access and permissions, this account needs to be a member of the local administrators group prior to executing the installation of ClickView server program. In order for the services to communicate with each other, this account also has to be part of the group called ClickView Administrators. The ClickView Administrators group is created automatically for you during the installation when you choose to specify an account and the account will automatically be put into the group for you. This option is highly advised. However, if you choose to bypass entering the administrator account during the installation process, you will have to add the account to the ClickView Administrators group manually from the Services Console in Windows before any ClickView services will communicate and function. In most scenarios, especially when ClickView services are spread out on several machines, it is necessary to use a domain account and to use the same domain account for all services. And remember, this account always has to be a member of the local administrators group and ClickView administrators group for proper operations. So what are some of the things to think about before troubleshooting? Well, when troubleshooting an unknown ClickView server behavior, it is always good to verify which account is running the ClickView services and that this user is a member of the correct groups. As you can see, in our example, QV service is the account running all of our services. Also, another common issue is the password setting for the administrator account running the services. Remember to check never under account expires and check password never expires under password options. You should also be aware of the other groups used by ClickView. For example, if you have a publisher license, it is possible to assign users to the document administrators group. Users in the document administrators groups are only allowed to access the tabs in QMC that are related to either user documents or source documents. This setting is located under System, Setup, ClickView Server, Folder Access. Another group which is located in the Windows Service Manager is the ClickView EDX group, which is used when triggering tasks through EDX. The user that uses the EDX trigger has to be part of this group. Take note, this group you will need to add manually. It is not created automatically. Another group which is located in the Windows Service Manager is the ClickView Management API group, which is necessary when you are using the Management API. The user planning on using the ClickView Management API has to be part of this group. Take note, this group you need to add manually as well. It is not created automatically. Now, let's review how you would troubleshoot a few different issues with communications between the ClickView server services. For example, if there is an issue with the management service communicating with the directory service connector, most issues will be avoided by using the same domain user on all of the services. And, making sure it is the member of a correct group, as I mentioned before. Another troubleshooting tip, since the communication is done over specific ports, there may also be an issue when ports are being blocked or if using proxies. So this is a great time to dig deeper into the different ports that the various services use. From the local machine where the ClickView Management service is running, there should usually be no problems to reach the ClickView Management console which is accessible as a web page running over port 4780. So enter the following URL in your browser, http colon slash slash localhost colon 4780 slash qmc slash system setup dot htm hash. If you see the qmc interface, the port is open and communication is open, as you can see in our test. If qmc is not accessible from the local machine, that usually means you are not part of the ClickView Administrators group, which I showed you earlier in the Windows Service Manager. Another possible cause 
would be if the server had been configured to use a proxy. This can be checked in Internet Explorer under the Connection tab, LAN Settings, which will show you if the proxy is being used. If yes, verify all address settings and ports. Try disabling proxy server option temporarily as a troubleshooting step if your network environment allows it, and use automatic detect settings. If there is a problem reaching the management console from the remote machine, then the first thing to check is that the service accounts are members of the correct group. But also it is necessary that port 4780 is open or permitted ingress-egress rules to the ClickView server. A good way to check if the port is open is to use Telnet. The Telnet client nowadays is not installed by default on Windows Server operating systems, but it's easy to install it using the Add feature option in the Server Manager window. Locate and add Telnet client. Ours is already installed. So once the Telnet client is installed on the machine, which is having a problem reaching the management console, open a command prompt and issue the command Telnet surfer name 4780. In our case, it is Telnet QVS WEBD QDS space 4780. If this command line results in a blinking prompt, then it has been successful and we know that the port is open. However, if there is an error, then either we can tell by the error message received in the command line itself, or it is a symptom of something blocking the request to the management console. For example, a firewall rule that blocks port 4780. Assuming we can now reach the management console based on a few troubleshooting steps taken, we can get an overview of the status of the different services on the Status tab under Services. If one of these services show up as disconnected, the reason might be that the service is not running under the Windows Service screen. But if we know that the service is in fact running, then there is a communication issue between the management console and the disconnected service. The ports that each service use are specified in the manual, but a good way to get an overview is to view the services on the System and then Setup tab in the Management Console. Here it is possible to see which port each service uses. The management service listens to port 4799. So if there is an issue with reaching that service from another machine, then you can use Telnet in the same way as I described before to verify that the port is open. For ClickView servers, you will notice a difference. It doesn't tell you the port number in clear text. Instead, the link shows you that you are using QVP, which is a protocol used for communication with the ClickView server. You should be aware that this protocol is available on ports 4747 and 4774. 4747 is the port used when connecting from the plugin client to the ClickView server, and port 4774 is used between the web server and ClickView server when tunneling. Next service, we can find the distribution service port number by clicking on the folder and noticing that it is listening to port 4720. Let's assume that the distribution service is running on a different machine and is not responding. It would then show up as a disconnected in the status view. Reasons for it not responding include not using the same domain account on all services, or that the domain user is not a member of the ClickView administrators group on both machines, or if the port is blocked by a firewall. One easy way to verify if the port is open is to copy the specific URL and open a browser. The correct response is to receive a page full of XML code. Not getting an XML code on the page would indicate that the port being blocked or the user running the browser not being in part of the ClickView administrators group. The next service, we can find the directory service connector listens on port 4730 as we click on the folder. Copy the specific URL and open a browser. The correct response is to receive a page full of XML code just like before. The directory service connector also uses port 4735 for custom users, which is possible to see if you have custom directories set up, in which case it will tell you the port is configured to use in the port column. Finally, the ClickView web service is listening to port 4750, which is used for configurations. 
copy the specific URL, and open a web browser. The correct response is to receive a page full of XML code. The ClickView web server also listens to HTTP port 80 or 443 if configured to use HTTPS. In summary, when troubleshooting communication with any of these services, standard troubleshooting starts with checking the user that runs the services and that the relevant port is open, which can be done with Telnet or open URL in a browser. As a reminder, knowing what requirements are needed for the window user accounts running the ClickView services is a great start. Then take it to the next level by testing the suspected ports for the service not communicating properly. A few additional tools and resources you can use include the ClickView help menu. Also, you can view the release notes, reference manual, article knowledge base, and click community.